welcome to the Rising Stars of Comedy. I am Akriti Tyagi. This is an extremely important episode for us as Rising Stars completes its 100 episodes today. Cherry on the cake for us is our guest for this show. I have worked with him on the bottom line and was instantly enamored with his wit, his intelligence, his chilled out nature. But most of all, his humility, his charm, his exuberant energy. He has performed across the nation, has authored two books, is the founder of one of India's premier comedy groups, the East India Comedy. He is undoubtedly one of India's top comedians, a force to be reckoned with. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my personal favorite, Sora Pan. Yeah. Woo! Yes! Thank you! Oh my God, this is amazing! <laughs> this is such an honor for you. Yes, it is. Thank you. What a great joke I have opened with. <laughs> Uh, I really want to know what this mic is doing here when there's nobody sitting watching this. Because we are doing a mock comedy show. Here. A mock comedy show. Yes. That's why you decided to call yes. me. Yeah. It's like this is guy who does comedy pretendingly. Yeah. And I like how this comparison between our looks. Like you're dressed for the Oscars. Yeah. I'm dressed for like See, I'm, Kalba I'm Devi. See, I'm, I'm preparing. <laughs> what is I'm that? preparing. You're pre pre pretending to be a snake. No, I'm preparing. Uh, so what's up? Yeah? So what's your journey to comedy been like? Um, hey. how, how have you felt? It's like, been a good um, one year. Thanks, yeah. yeah Thank that's you so, nice. so much for asking. It's a pleasure. Yeah, so. but uh, I'm still the host of the show, yeah. so we'll start the show on that note. Thank you. I love cricket and I watch cricket like a two Indian show. I don't watch it on like ESPN Star Sports, I watch it on Doordarshan. <laughs> <laughs> because Doordarshan makes cricket ten times more exciting. <laughs> Anything could happen in the middle of the match. <laughs> it could be the most crucial mo uh, moment in the match. Bharat ko chahiye fans in GT ke liye. Game baaz andar aaye hain, game baaz ne ball dali, Dhoni ne ball lagumaaye, ball hawa mein, ball hawa mein, ball. Nirma, Nirma, Nirma ne ball chhod diya. How did you think about pursuing a career in comedy? How? How did it happen? <laughs> you see, what happened was I had Iron Man's heart, <laughs> which got removed. I went to comedy completely by chance. I actually was I was working with Veer Dwaf. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he was a comedian. I mean, he still is. I don't know why he was. <laughs> like, it's not like he's moved on to <laughs> becoming a salesman at uh, Big Bazaar or something. But you walk inside and like, would you like to buy? <laughs> <laughs> Some Mumbai salsa sauces which we have for you. Uh, <laughs> oh, I have a travel brochure. Go, go, go on, guys. Anyone? Acha, so um, then. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Veer, uh, Veer and me were working together for a long time on a show in a rival channel which I can't name. Yeah, please don't. And yeah, we were working on a, on a news comedy show there for, the, for a very long time. And then Veer was like, hey, listen, I'm opening, I'm doing a show in Delhi tomorrow, okay. and he wanted to join, and his show then was called Walking on Broken Glass, and I'd never done stand-up before. Okay. And he's like, come, it'll be great, you're damn funny. I'm like, yeah, weird, I'm gonna rock this shit. Uh, and I land up on stage, and usually the way it happens for comedians is that you huh. go through open mics, mm -hmm. where you test out jokes first in front of 30 friends, they're like, you're so talented, even though inside they're like, you're terrible, please quit tomorrow. Huh. Um, I basically made my stand-up comedy debut in front of 415 people who were there to see Veer Das. And I uh, was supposed to do, I think, 11 minutes. I did my set in four minutes. Okay. I was just the worst set in the world. And the, the, the joke from that set, which Veer and me keep talking about, is my hot baby joke. Okay. <laughs> which is? Which is which is my opening joke okay. in front of 400 relatively conservative people in okay. Delhi. At that, like, this is like, what, six years back. Okay. Uh, the joke was that, uh, you know what, I hate people who are married <laughs> and then they come and show you their baby pictures of their kids. Huh. And I finally figured out a way to stop them from showing me baby pictures. As soon as they show me a baby album, I look at it and I'm like, hmm, that's one hot baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, look at that, the baby in the bathtub. Oh, that baby, now it's wearing a swimsuit. That's the Pamela Anderson of babies. Uh, and that was my opening joke. <laughs> in front of 400 people. <laughs> they were all like, what is happening? Why is this guy being provided with a mic? <laughs> and, and yeah, that's when I started. And I, I literally, I, I did that show, and we did two back-to-back -back shows, and I did that joke back-to-back, -back, and Veer is like, can you please stop doing that joke? I was like, no, man, it's funny, bro. You don't know comedy. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, that was how I started comedy, and I've never done those two <laughs> jokes ever again in my life because they're terrible. I love Mumbai. We like Mumbai. Yes, again. Yes. Guys, I, as a comedian, have traveled everywhere. I've done shows all over the world. I did a show recently in Dombey Valley. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I did a show in Candy Valley as well as well. <laughs> Logan Wallam here, what's up? It's going down. It's going down. 
comedy which is you know which as a career is not even a registered pro, uh, profession in India. It's registered under others. Okay. Other services, which sounds so dubious. So which like, which means that you obviously searched. I have because you my CA, googled it. Uh, my no my my CA was like when I was filing for service tax. I pay service tax. Ah, I'm very okay. rich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's there on the other services, yeah. and which makes me sound so shady, right? I'm in other services. <laughs> you want to come for other How services? How did you break the news to the family? My family. Uh, yeah. I don't think there was any news to break. I don't think it was like overnight where it's like. Today I'm writing for TV and the next day I'm in the whatever. I think it was a very gradual progression. Okay. And my parents were actually very, my parents were very supportive of what I did. Primarily because I don't think I left them much option. <laughs> where, where I was like, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they, they were very, very supportive and very nice. But even if they weren't, I think I would have still been what I'm doing right now. And also my sister more than made up for me because she's okay. very overqualified and she's an MBA and she wants scholarships to do MBAs abroad and wow. very intelligent and annoying. Uh, <laughs> no, my sister's awesome. Um, okay. So I think she made up for it. So I think they realized that that's where we're going to earn credibility as a family from and this guy's where we're going to earn disrepute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, and, and there was a year where, <laughs> where I think I, I had, I had. Uh, so after I, I left college, I tried everything. I, I love cricket, man. I hate it when you're watching a match and in the middle of an over, they cut to an advertisement. It doesn't make sense to me. Our cricketers are in half the ads anyway. Just stay on the ground, let them shoot the ad there itself. <laughs> middle of an over, Sachin appeals to the umpire. Umpire says not out. Sachin grabs the middle stump, stabs the umpire in the heart with it, turns to stump camera. Hi, la life insurance. <laughs> By the way, that's the first time in history Kamli has done such an impersonation. Uh, so, yes. Yes. Or like Harbhajan Singh gets into a Maruti car and just starts driving it all around Dhoni, annoying the hell out of Dhoni. And Dhoni like, oh, it's a car, yeah. And Bajji like, oh, it's a car, it's a car, it's a car, it's a car. I think you're one of those very, very rare comedians who I see has written so much. Even for Bottom Line, I remember you would furiously be writing. You had new sets, new jokes, new ideas, you know, and ideating constantly. Does it not uh, get heavy after a certain point in time, you know, to be ideating so much, to be thinking so much, to write constantly? Well, it, it's, it's a very weird thing, but like I think all comedians tend to not be good at too much yeah. like it's like uh, like they are probably two things i'm good at doing yeah. in the planet and one of them yeah. is writing jokes yeah. that's and i'll be good at writing novels right now i'm okay uh, so he's written two i've written two guys he's written i don't know two. who i'm talking to here me <laughs> yeah me. i've written two guys <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean the, and the body work honestly comes from professional pride i, I, I want to be the best at what I'm doing. I may not be there yet. I may never be there yet, but I will attempt to be there constantly. And also, it's a striving from a live from coming from a very professional family. Yeah. Like my mom and dad were like UPSC toppers, oh. which at that point of time basically meant that they were amongst the top ten most intelligent people in that year in the history of the country. Oh. Uh, my sister is like very very smart, very intelligent. So. I always grew up in a family which sort of believed in being pretty professional and I think most of the time I work with people who are professional. Um, so I, I, I don't really I don't really see why a comedian can't work six hours a day. Okay. There is no reason why you can't write jokes for six hours a day. A lot of like younger cynical people are like, Haan, par yaar, mera wo jo, wo jo hit hai na, wo aega? and you are just like like selling out and writing and I'm like, no, you that's what you do. Yeah. How can you not? Uh, so yeah, I think there's like A, a love for comedy, B, professionalism, and also I like money. <laughs> <laughs> I, li I like getting like paid for stuff. And that's the stuff. bottom line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, the bottom, bottom line. line. Olilo Falicista for Olilo Fijate, which is Russian for Oye, which is Russian for Oye. <laughs> I don't have a joke. Don't expect me to have a joke every time. It's not a funny show, all right? We learn something as well. Anyway, let's crack some jokes because things have happened. There was a meeting between a genocidal terrorist and a vainglorious journalist which kicked up a storm in India as Ved Pratap Vedic met Hafiz Saeed for an interview in Pakistan. First of all, one second, your, your name is Ved Pratap Vedic. You sound less like a journalist and more like a Vedic maths 
class, like coaching class. Like, Bacha, today I will teach you how to multiply your fame by ignoring the interest of your country raised to the power of me getting retweeted on Twitter. Equal success. <laughs> You obviously, as I mentioned, you founded the East India Comedy. Yeah, I gave How birth to it. He did, literally. I was pregnant for yeah. one day. Yes, And literally. then the stamp duty got paid. Yeah. <laughs> so and yeah. anybody who's seen the logo has seen his face on that. Oh, no, they removed my face from the logo, but by the why? way. Yeah, yeah, they did. Like, How dare they? Well, because everyone was like, uh, why should we be under your thumb rule? Basically, my dictatorship so was like a problem. That. Yeah. And also, yeah, so that's, I think ever since my name, my, my face got removed from the logo, I'm like, I'm done, bros. <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so it's, uh, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but how did East India Comedy come about? Uh, so, Sapan, Sahil, Kunal and me have been friends before we became comedians. I think we, yeah. like, it was almost like, um, <laughs> you know how, like, Sindhis will join NSCI <laughs> just because they are all Sindhis. Uh, <laughs> I think we joined, East, we, we started East India Comedy because we were comedians. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the idea was basically to, uh, there were a lot of venues which were interested in doing comedy yeah. and obviously you can't do 60 minutes of new jokes every day. So, it was literally probably purely on all four of us <laughs> self-interest to, you know, combine together and we can yeah. do shows all over the place. And if you see footage of some of the shows we did, oh my God, it was horrendous. <laughs> it was so bad. Like yesterday, oh my, we saw one, one clip where Sahil and Sapan had done one uh, sketch for huh. the first time and it was just puns. Really? It was just like, Sahil was like, so, I saw Godfather yesterday and it's like, Al Pacino, what about Cappuccino? It was like that <laughs> level of jokes and we are like, what is this rubbish? <laughs> so, so we were, we were terrible and I think like fortunately, I mean also, we would have never been able to do like the number of videos and stuff that we do mm. if you were separate, so yeah. My name is Saurabh Pant. This is the East India Comedy News where we bring you the news that's fresh, fresher than a Marwadi bride in a Suhagrath. Okay, that's, that's a bad example. They're, they're not fresh anymore. <laughs> but look, traditionally, we've been told to always respect and mourn the dead. But not today, because the asshole is dead. That's right, Mumbai. Go out there to Gateway of India and roam around naked. Take shots at Leopold. Go and watch a screening of Casablanca. Because frankly, my dear, I do give a damn that Kassab is dead. Woohoo! What a win for India, even though it took us crores of money, lots of years, solid manpower and terrorism is still rampant across the country. Wow! Shah Jahan wasn't romantic. Shah Jahan was the world's first Delhiite, alright? 